If you remember when you have a converse, the converse flips the first and the second part statements, so the if becomes the then and the then became the if. So we had the corresponding angles postulate, which told us that um, if you had two parallel lines and they're cut by a transversal, then the corresponding angles are congruent. Which we have now is if you have two lines that are cut by a transversal and the corresponding angles are congruent, then that means the lines have to be parallel. So before we had parallel lines give us congruent angles, now we have congruent angles give us parallel lines. So it's just going in the opposite direction. So what we have is if angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, angle 2 is congruent to angle 4, angle 8 is congruent to angle 6, and angle 7 is congruent to angle 5, then, oops, I forgot to label the lines, so we'll say A and B, A is parallel to B. So before it was parallel gave us congruent angles, now we have congruent angles give us parallel. So again, we're just talking about the corresponding angles right now. So 1 and 3, 2 and 4, 8 and 6, and 7 and 5. Okay, so then we have the parallel postulate, which tells us that if we have a line and a point that's not on the line, so anywhere out in space, there's exactly one line, so only one line, that can be drawn through this point that will be parallel to the line that we started out with. So if I go and I attempt to draw a line through the point, this one is parallel, but if I draw any other line, it will not be parallel. There's only one line that will exist through that point that's parallel. All right, so now we have these, um, these theorems that we can use to prove lines are parallel. And then when I say we're going to prove lines are parallel, I don't mean we're going to write proofs. We're just going to do calculations to show that lines are parallel. Okay, um, so these are, there's four of them. Okay, so... These are all converses again. So we used to have that if you had two parallel lines. Oops, I wrote interior when I should have written exterior here. Um, if you have two parallel lines and they were cut by a transversal, then they gave us congruent alternate exterior angles. Now we have if you have two lines and they're cut by a transversal and the alternate exterior angles are congruent, that makes the lines parallel. So it just goes backwards. Before we had parallel lines, gave us congruent angles. Now we have congruent angles, give us parallel lines. So we're just moving in the opposite direction. So if I have two lines that exist and then I cut a transversal and then I look at these angles here, or these angles here, and I get that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, or angle 3 is congruent to angle 4, that would mean that lines A and B are parallel. Okay. Sort of the same idea. We have two lines in a plane hanging out. I'm going to call them M and N this time. So M and N are hanging out. And then along comes transversal T. And we get consecutive interior angles. So we're going to be talking about angles 1 and 2 or 3 and 4. And so we get that if measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 2 equals 180, or the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 equals 180, then M is parallel to N. So if these add up to 180, the lines are parallel, or if those add up to 180, the lines are parallel. Okay, so again, this is another flip it around thing. So we have if two lines in a plane, so 
What shall we call these lines? Okay, Joe and Bob. Joe and Bob are cut by a transversal. And if we get pairs of alternate interior angles, so one, two, or three and four, that are congruent, then Joe and Bob are parallel. So if angle one is congruent to angle two, or angle three is congruent to angle four, then Joe is parallel to Bob. And finally, we have the perpendicular transversal converse, which tells us that if we have two lines in a plane, Frodo and Bilbo, Frodo and Bilbo, and they are perpendicular to the same line, then they're parallel. So if, let's see, I don't think I spelled that right, but if Sauron is perpendicular to Frodo and perpendicular to Bilbo, then Frodo is parallel to Bilbo. Can you tell I didn't get enough sleep? All right. So given the following information, is it possible to prove that any of these lines are parallel? So for number A, letter A, I've got 1 and 6 are congruent. Now if I look at these, these are alternate, alternate exterior angles, right? Because they're on the outside of two lines and they're on the opposite side of a transversal. So this will make Q parallel to S by alternate exterior. We don't know about R yet. I can't say anything about R because I don't know anything about these two yet. So I'm just, I have one and six. So that's Q and S. Now for two and three, these are alternate interior. This is what will let me know that Q and R are parallel. So Q is parallel to R because of alternate interior. So far, okay, so if we look at these six, okay, so I have two and eight. So I'm going to do C in red. So I have two and eight. These are on opposite sides of, I didn't put letters on the lines. <sighs> so we'll say that's A and B and C, C and D. Okay. These are on opposite sides of A. That makes A my transversal. And they're interior of C and D. So these are going to be that uh, C is parallel to D from alternate interior. These two here yeah. won't have a relationship. No. no, because they have to be touching the same line. The two angles have to be touching the same line to have a relationship. So either you have to both be touching any one of these four lines, but two touches C and A, and 16 touches D and B, so they have no relationship because they don't touch the same line at any point. Do you see how two and three both, or two and eight both touch A? So they have a relationship. Yeah. Do you have a test um, for some type of exam? Uh -huh. That's a common mistake that people make for things that they get the answers wrong. I would say the most common mistake is not labeling or like somehow like using color or something, and so you don't see what's happening as well. Because they're friction, you know, they're yeah, yeah. So here, like, like this one, we'll do 3 and 11. Okay, 3 and 11 are both touching C. That makes C my transversal. The, ang or the line that both angles touch is the transversal. 
So 3 and 11 are touching C. C is my transversal. And if you look now, that means I'm kind of comparing A and B. If I have my four squares, C, uh, 3 and 11 are in the same spot. So this is a corresponding angles. So that tells me that A is parallel to B from corresponding angles. Okay, if I come now to, let's do, three and 11. I think, yeah, 3 and 11. Three and 11. Uh, I, it, it's right there. It kind of got corresponding angles. Yeah. So if we go with the pink for 12 and 14, 12 and 14 are both touching B. So that makes B the transversal, so they're exterior and they're on opposite sides. So that makes C parallel to D for alternate exterior. Okay. Um, let's do green. I have 1 and 15. Okay, now look at this, 1 and 15. Well, but no, it's not just that. Angle 1 touches A and C. Angle 15 touches B and D. So um, we can't prove anything. For D? No, no, corresponding angles are congruent. Con uh, consecutive angles interior are the 180. So corresponding are in the same position in like the four square. And then if I had 3 and 10, 3 and 10 would have to add up to 180. Does that help? So do you see why 1 and 15 don't prove anything? Because they don't touch the same line ever. So I they can be congruent all they want. It doesn't tell me anything. Um, because they have no relationship. You have to be touching the same line to have a relationship. Um, let's do purple. 8 and 13. Here's 8 and here's 13. They're same side interior. They add up to 180. So that tells me that A and B are parallel because of consecutive interior angles. And finally, orange, 8 and 6. Okay, 8 and 6 are vertical angles. But vertical angles don't tell me a relationship between any lines. So um, these are vertical angles. No parallel relationship exists. So I can't prove anything with those either. So vertical angles don't prove anything, and angles that are not touching each other don't prove anything. Or don't not touching each other, I'm sorry, not touching the same line. You can only have corresponding angles, alternate exterior, alternate interior or same side consecutive interior that add up to 180. Anything else doesn't prove anything at all. So there's only the four ways to show that two lines are parallel. Okay, we have problems like this where we have to find the x that will force these two to be parallel. So I want a to be parallel to b. So I'm looking at this angle and this angle. These are alternate interior angles, so I want them to be equal to each other. So I have alternate interior. I need them to be congruent. Okay, so I've got these two are alternate interior. So I want them to match, so I'm going to set them equal to each other. So then I'm just going to solve it.
So 2x minus 21 equals 7 plus 21. 2x equals 28 divided by 2. x is 14. This is the only value that x can be that will make these lines parallel. Yeah. Yeah, the only yeah, they'll always for this for the parallel line part, they'll always be equal to each other or add up to one each. There's not gonna be any other scenario. Yourself, if you wanna, you know, check your work, you can plug in fourteen. So I can do five times fourteen plus seven and seven times fourteen minus twenty one and see if these are equal to the same thing. Which I'll do right now. So 70 plus 7 and 98 minus 21. This is 77. That is 77. They match. You got the right answer. If we're perpendicular to one line, we have to be perpendicular to the other in order to be parallel. So that's 90. So I'm going to set this equal to 90. So 4y plus 10 is equal to 90. I'm subtract 10 from both sides to get 4y is 80. And then divide by 4. So y is 20. And again, you can check your work by plugging 20 in and making sure this equals 90. Okay. Um, here we have alternate exterior, so again they have to be equal. So 3x minus 14 is equal to 2x plus 25. Subtract 2x from both sides. x minus 14 is equal to 25. Add 14. And you get that x is 39. And then lastly, I have two on the same side on the interior. So these are going to add up to 180. So this is the only time that they should add up to 180 is if they're same side on the interior. So 7x minus 2 plus 10x minus 3x equals 180. Uh, with this being the first angle and that one being the second. So 7 and 10x is 17x. Negative, whoops. It would help if I wrote down the problem correctly. There's no x there. Are you guys supposed to catch me when I do something like that? 7 minus 3 is 4x. Negative 2 plus 10 is 8. Subtract 8 from both sides, and you get 4x is equal to 172, which you can divide by 4. And you get that x is equal to 43.